The chapter I did was chapter 13, Elements as Money. In the very first part of this chapter, he talks about how there are different types of things that have been used as currency, such as cattle, spices, uh, teeth, salt, cocoa beans, cigarettes, even beetle legs at one point, and tulips of all things. The reason that these have been currency is because they're all relatively hard to fake, unlike metals, especially transition metals. This is because they share similar chemistries and densities. These similar properties and their ability to bond so easily with each other is the reason that people have been fooled for so many years, but we'll touch more on that later. Now, on to King Midas, if that's how you say it. The next thing he talks about is King Midas in Turkey, and this is in 700 BC. Now, according to legend, the Greek god Apollo, who's the god of music, asked Midas to judge a contest between him and some other guy. Uh, obviously, Midas, Midas chose someone else, and Apollo turned his ears into donkey ears. Then, later on, he helped a centaur named Selenius, that's how you say it. And in return, he granted him one wish. He wished everything he touched turned to gold. And if anyone's read Greek mythology, you will know that even his food turned to gold. Uh, so maybe not the best wish. But this probably never happened to the real King Midas, but there's a plausible reason for the myth. And that's because of the Bronze Age. Bronze can be made up of many different variations of the two elements, tin and copper. Now, bronze kind of has a copper tone to it, but brass is made from zinc and tin. It's a little more subtle and a little more golden. Sam Keen suggests that this is where everything he touches turns to gold myth comes from. Just a bunch of brass. And Sam Keen reminds us that this is not the only time that gold has been sought after. If everyone remembers El Dorado, the city of gold, and, of course, the gold rush. And when you hear gold rush, you typically hear it with the phrase, fool's gold. And one particular story that Sam Keen tells us takes place in Australia. Now, during this story, three Irishmen are just trekking across the outback, and all of a sudden their horse, it loses a shoe. And it was probably the luckiest breakdown in history because by the end of the third day, they ended up having eight pounds of gold. And this site later became known as Hannon's Find. Now, within the week of this find, people came flooding into Australia trying to get their break. But it was a desert, and supplies were not plentiful. However, the gold was, until it wasn't. Now, once the gold was almost gone, they had to start digging. And they didn't care about the piles of dirt that weren't gold, so they just used that to build a town. Little did they know, it was actually calvarite, which is one of the minerals from tell tellurium. And tellurium is one of the few elements that can actually fuse with gold. So when a bunch of campers who had built fires used rocks to surround the fire, and they started oozing gold, all hell broke loose in Hannon's find. People started pulling the bricks out of their house and knocking down chimneys just to get to a brick that had the minerals in it. Now those were two instances where deception was accidental, but King quickly moves on to counterfeiting. He talks about King Croesus and how he used gold and silver coins as currency. During this time, Croesus started buying off enemies in Sparta. This is when counterfeiting really became popular. And because a kingdom's economic health greatly depends on those coins, uh, counterfeiting was considered treason, and you could get hung or worse. He then talks about Isaac Newton, you know, the one that discovered gravity, and how he handled counterfeiting during his time with the Royal Mint. But long after he resigned, the world of counterfeiting changed with paper money. The head of China... Kublai Khan was a big part of paper money becoming popular. He was very pushy and threatened anyone who didn't use his currency that he would kill them. Nowadays, anyone who has a laser printer can pretty much print their own money, but Keen moves on 
on how to prevent that kind of counterfeiting. Kane explains that the EU has one of the most sophisticated uh, money systems. This is because the element europium. They use europium because it can emit three types of light depending on the energy levels it's emitted. In order to pr protect the euro, the, U the EU infuses the ink with europium, but each part has different energy levels so that they appear different colors under a special laser. Moving on to elements as currency, we talk about cerium and its role with Primo Levi, who used the element to barter for food in a concentration camp, since it could be used to spark and light cigarettes. Next, Keane talks about the metal market, the aluminum market to be exact. Aluminum used to be considered a precious metal, like silver or platinum. It was even worth more than gold, but it was one of the most abundant metals in the world. This was because aluminum is almost never found pure. It is almost always fused with something else. It, is, it was so precious and hard to come by that the United States actually used it on the top of the Washington Monument. The market for aluminum all changed in 1886 when a kid, and I mean kid, he was only 23, uh, from Ohio named Charles Hall put an electric current through liquid filled with aluminum compounds. And voila, little silver nuggets. Uh, he and pa Paul Hirolit found this out basically at the same time, so they're both credited with finding this solution. Charles Hall then started a company called Alcoa, Aluminum Company of America, and became extremely successful. He is pretty much responsible for taking what once was a precious metal and turning it into something you see every day, in things like soda cans, baseball bats, and even airplanes. Charles Hall uh, he changed the name. He kind of changed the name of aluminum from aluminium to aluminum, which gave him an, an even greater edge in the competition. Uh, throughout this chapter, it just goes to show that elements definitely have value, and as we all know, money talks.